college football just went down and we've been talking about the tide rolling uh throughout this entire uh episode and the uh the tide continued to roll on new year's day uh they beat up on Notre Dame shout out to my guys Devonta Smith Mac Jones and uh Najee uh Harris uh them boys came to play and uh they're going back to the national championship game is going down January 11th and uh, they will be playing the team that got the upset on the other side, uh, led by a young kid that that myself, you and uh, and, and Sean have been talking about in the group chat for for the last like two weeks, um, because we wanted to see him do well, and uh, I think he surpassed any expectations that we had for him in uh in that uh, Sugar Bowl win over. Clemson and uh, Trevor Lawrence, the projected number one pick. My question to you, Eric, is did he do enough for Jacksonville to really have to sit and debate this thing out on whether or not Trevor Lawrence is the better quarterback of the two, or does he need a win in the national championship game to solidify that? No, I think he's done enough um, to at least create the debate because you look at not only his performance in you know, this playoff game, but his performance last year. And over his two plus seasons as a starter, he only has one career loss, which was last year in the playoffs. So I think the body of work is strong enough. I think to me, he passed the eye test. When I watched that game, I wanted to see how he would handle pressure. I wanted to see how he would handle getting the ball down the field. I think he handled everything superbly. He ran when he needed to run. He he extended plays when he needed to extend plays. And he has a cannon of an arm. I mean, he just continued yes. to throw down the field. Um, and there was there was a particular play that really blew the game wide open. Uh, I think at the time they were up 35-21. And he hits a deep pass over the middle of the field. And um, even uh, Kurt Herstreet, who, who's breaking out a game, had made the comment of his growth as a quarterback because – Last year on the interception he throws at the end of the game, he allows number 24 to bait him and he tries to take the post and the post goes out to a corner route and he ends up throwing the interception that costs him the game. This year they send a deep post to 24 and he actually gets 24 to bait on it and then he gets the big play down the field, which showed his growth and his understanding of what the defense was trying to do. So I think I think all the tools are there. I, I think the, the kid is supremely gifted and then he also showed the toughness. He took yes. a hell of a shot and, you know, he came right back in the game, grimacing and all, but he said, I'm going to complete the game and I'm going to make sure we move on to the next round. So That's I think there will be discussions. I think the tough part is Trevor Lawrence, again, as we said, is is considered one of those can't miss prospects. And if you're Jacksonville, yeah. if you're Jacksonville, I think you need Trevor Lawrence because you need to sell tickets. They're a team, you know, they have a small fan base. They're probably, I mean, out of football teams alone in their, in their own state, they're the third team. And overall in sports, they're probably the, the sixth or seventh favorite team in, in the in the state. They need a guy like that who can sell tickets. So I think they go that route. But if you're the Jets, and I and I had this debate with uh, Will from on the board of sports, because I had to remind him as well. If you're the Jets, I think you were super excited by this performance from Justin Fields. Yes. And knowing that we can still get this talent at number two. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Will from on the board was a little skeptical. He was like, I don't know if it's all hype. And I'm like, look. I know everybody's talking about it now because it's fresh in our minds, but he had a hell of a playoff game last year as well. Mm-hmm. And I've said this over and over. The kid reminds me a lot of Deshaun Watson and what yeah. he's able to do. And I, I just don't think you could pass on him if you're the Jets. If you're the Jets, you have to take him. Yeah. And honestly, for me, uh, the jury is not out yet on who's the better quarterback, him or Trevor Lawrence. I know Trevor Lawrence has the hype, um, but if I'm if I'm just looking at you know what he's been able to do, um, and how the quarterback position is changing. Um, and then, you know, look at the, the, just the numbers heads up, you know, he dominated the performance that, that Trevor Lawrence had. And this is not a situation where we're talking about, you know, Trevor Lawrence, Lawrence who threw for 400 yards, but only had two touchdowns to one interceptions, you know, Justin Fields threw for 385 had six touchdowns to one interceptions. That's a four touchdown difference, four score difference in, in, in what they did. Um, you know what I mean? So the jury is still not out for me. I think the Jets may have gotten lucky. Um, I do agree with you. I think if you're 
if you're Jacksonville, you still have to kind of take Trevor Lawrence just because of the box office effect. Now, if Justin Fields can go out and beat Alabama, now that that might change things up to the point where now you really got to look look into this thing and say, you know what, this kid might be just as box office as Trevor Lawrence. And not only did he outplay Trevor Lawrence to get to the championship game, he beat Clemson and then went on to beat Nick Saban led defense and that Alabama defense, you know, the, 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 the rankings a little bit skewed this season just because, uh, you know, teams didn't play the same amount of games that they usually do when you have some teams, again, like you have an Oklahoma, uh, Ohio State team that only played six games coming into, into the playoffs. And then you have, you know, Clemson or Alabama team that played 10, 11 games. So the, the defensive rankings are a little bit skewed. Um, so they actually, they had, they have Alabama's defense uh, ranked fifth right now. Uh, however, you know what I'm saying? That's think, you know, the teams that are ahead of them are teams that are from the, the, the lesser conferences. Um, like they had Kent state as the, the, the highest ranked defense. And we know that the, the competition that they play is not on the level of a lot of these sec teams, a lot of these pack 10 pack 12 teams. So, you know, if you can go in and beat Alabama after coming off of beating Clemson, I think we, we, we gotta, we gotta go back to the drum board. Yeah, it's, it's possible if, if he's able to run the gauntlet and, and get that game against Alabama, and that'd be eerily similar to what Deshaun did before he left, when he was able to win that national championship as well. Mm-hmm. A- again, I think the kid is great. Everything is there. Um, there were a few things that I saw from Trevor Lawrence that I didn't like in that game. And there's some things that I think are, are, are going to translate to the next level because he really struggled with the outside pass rush. And what yeah. I mean by that is he takes such a deep drop on a snapback that the outside pass rushers were able to get to him with, with very little effort. They didn't have to do much, but just run a wide route to him and he was there waiting for him. So mm-hmm. that's something he's going to have to work on. And then you wonder, you know, he's a guy who scrambles a lot in college, but you wonder if maybe he's able to do that because it's a little slower competition. Whereas the next level, you got guys like Chase Young who are faster than you at defensive line. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's going to be some things to watch. I think Trevor Lawrence still has to be the number one pick, but, but I do think that Justin Fields has now created the conversation as to should we take him? And if he has a big game against Alabama, now it becomes a stronger conversation as you know what the kid has shown for two years that he's ready to go and he may be the better fit. Yeah. And um, so, all right. So who are you taking? Obviously, you know, the tide is going to roll in my direction, but who are you picking in the the championship game? If if they were playing immediately, like if they were playing this week, I probably would have leaned towards Ohio State just because of their performance. But you're giving Nick Saban a whole week to game plan for you. Yeah. And Nick Saban is the best coach in college for a reason. They're going to be ready for whatever they throw at them. Um, I don't think there's really any matchup that they can exploit against Alabama, aside from Fields using his legs to extend plays and cause havoc in that route, in that manner. But those deep pl- passes they got against Clemson, they won't be there against Alabama. They're going to have to be more patient. He's going to have to p- play mistake-free football. And they're going to need the kid, uh, Trey Sermon, to have a big running day as well. Because we know Alabama every year boasts several pros on that defense, and uh, and I'm gonna tell you why he will not have that type of running uh, game. And, and there's one guy that's lined up right in the middle, and that's Dylan Moses. And I can't see him running for a buck forty on this Alabama defense. Um, now I do hope that Justin Fields has a good game um, because I want that for him. But I'm still taking Alabama. Um, but you know. Again, Dylan Moses, and when you're talking about going downfield, you got Patrick Sertan the second, who is that he's that blue chip caliber. He's he's Pop second gen- I mean in college. Se- yes, yeah, second generation. His his dad played in the NFL and his dad was a top corner in the NFL. So he's of that cloth. And that guy is out there lurking. So <laughs> you know, you gotta you gotta be careful with that. So I'm taking Alabama to win uh the championship game. You know, just roll tide, man. This this is a whole episode of everybody get your roll on, man. Everybody get your roll on. This is Dion Grant from the New York Giants, Super Bowl champ. And you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Real talk, we 
as real as you thought. Real 